Hey guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are. My name is Boom Shikha and I welcome you to my channel, but I mostly speak about INFJ stuff. So grateful that you're here. So grateful for all the comments and the subscriptions. I am so in awe of all of you people. I love you. In this video, I'm going to be speaking about how INFJs have a hundred to a one ratio between thinking, you know, all these thoughts that we have, um, and listening versus speaking. Right? We spend as we are observers of mankind. I would say we're observers of human nature of of this world that we occupy. We're bystanders here. We are always facing our backs to the wall and watching the world do its thing. We watch and we learn and we assimilate all this information and we form all of these worldviews based on it. And so we get all this information coming at us and then we use that information in order to form other judgments about people or intuitive information about other people and things around us, right? And so we are observers and we spend a lot of time observing. That means watching, listening, and just you know, visualizing what's going on around us. I spend a lot of time people watching. I spend a lot of time standing in a corner in random places and observing what's going on around me. I am not just looking at people and what they're wearing and you know if they have brand names on or anything like that. But I do look at that because it's interesting to me how people are very particular about the stuff that they wear, how they look and all that. That fascinates me. But I'm also watching for emotions. I'm watching for relationships. I'm watching for how people interact with other people. I'm also watching for how they interact with me. When they see me watching them, what do they do? Do they look away? Do they look back at me? Do they get embarrassed? Do they blush? What do they do? It's fascinating. All of it is fascinating, right? And I think... When I'm in a group setting as well, like when I'm with a bunch of people and we're at a dinner party, I don't do it that often, but when I do hang out with people, people, um, I'm always, always, always listening more than I speak. Always. It's just the way it is. And a lot of people assume it's because, first of all, they assume it's because I have nothing to say, which is really interesting to me. That in itself is something that I can use in order to learn more about people. Other times they think that I'm shy which is not the truth either, um, which is, again, interesting to me. Or they'll think I'm stupid, um, you know, I'm, like, dumb and I have nothing to say, which is also, again, great, you know. All of this is amazing information that I can use in order to build my repertoire about the world. Thank you for that. Nothing they say will be, you know, will be something that's going to affect me anyway, so I love learning about all this stuff. But a lot of times I'll be sitting and watching and listening and obviously thinking and analyzing in my head, and people will come to me or will be sitting next to me and say, you know, what is your opinion on the matter? And I always stop and pause at that moment because I'm thinking to myself, what is my opinion? Is it valid in this position? Is it something that I should be sharing with these people? Is it going to help the conversation run better? Does it matter if I say something? I'm always, always, always a proponent of that Buddhist saying, that you know we have two ears and one mouth for a reason is because we should, should, we should be speaking less than we than we're listening. So we'll be we should be spending more time keeping our mouth shut and listening rather than talking all the time. And I've said this before in a previous episode that I think people who speak a lot I think they're empty inside. Now again that's a very harsh thing to say, but I feel like how do you say it? empty vessels make more noise is that the right saying I don't know if that's the right saying but that's what I think is that when you say a lot of stuff I feel like you're trying to hide something and so when people ask me for their for my opinion I will say something only if I think it's going to enhance them or to teach them something or it's going to enhance the conversation right I hate speaking just for the sake of speaking and that's one of the worst things about not worse but one of the back one of the negatives about being an INFJ because in this world that you live in you need to speak up you need to pipe up you need to talk especially if you're in a corporate world you need to pipe up you need to speak you need to talk about yourself you need to brand yourself you need to pump yourself up in public you know you need to be that person whereas most of us INFJs are comfortable 
sitting, analyzing, and then giving feedback after a long analysis, right? 100 to 1 ratio, as I said. There's a lot of thinking and listening that goes on before there's any kind of speaking that happens. I will spend most of my time listening and, and thinking about what's going on around me rather than saying anything. And a lot of times that has caused me issues in the corporate world because people think that I'm nothing useful to say, that I'm stupid, that I have... Um, that I'm not qualified enough for my job, that that I should not have that position because I don't know what I'm talking about, things like that, right? Because we don't pipe up all the time. In that regard, extroverts have a major advantage, right? Unfortunately, that's the case, right? So I've learned to pipe, you know, pipe up and say things when even when I'm like, you know, this is such a useless thing to say, but I'm gonna say it because I know that this is going to pump me up in other people's opinion. You know? And I know that I have to talk about myself and say all of the amazing things I'm ta doing because otherwise my boss is going to not know about it. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's another thing. If you are in a corporate world, unfortunately, you guys have to learn quickly to say amazing things about yourself. It's very easy for an extrovert to do that. Very hard for us to do that, especially for our energies. But we need to. This world that we live in, it requires that. And so I'm really working on reducing that 100 to 1 ratio to maybe 50-50. Really trying. It's not, not very easy for me. It's very easy for me to do this one-on-one -on -one kind of thing where I feel like I'm speaking to one person. I speak, I, when I do these videos, I feel like I'm speaking to one INFJ out there who's listening to me, who's watching me, and who's getting a lot of benefit out of me. Right? But when I'm in a, in a big setting where a lot of people are there and there are a lot of people listening to my, my spiel, I'll always lower my voice. I'll always lower my voice and I only speak to one person who's sitting right next to me. It's odd though, it's unfortunate or fortunate, but people are fascinated by us and I don't know why, I have no idea why. So whenever I do speak up, everyone just quietens down at the table you know, and I'm speaking, I'm trying to be really soft about it. But everyone has quieted down and everyone's like, what, what did you say? Hey, what, what did you, and I'm like, oh shit. So, but then I'll say it out loud and people are like, oh, that's interesting. And then the conversation will go on from there. But then for a moment or two, or even longer than that, the spotlight was on me and I feel extremely uncomfortable because first of all, I don't know if what I said is useful. And also, I don't know if I want to have a one to many conversation. Even this, a lot of people ask me, you know, how can you talk to thousands of people? I mean, you're getting hundreds of views, like, you know, people are watching you. Again, I don't think of myself as doing these videos for hundreds of thousands of people. I think of it, I'm, I'm doing it for one person who I'm speaking to, who's sitting right in front of me, one INFJ who's having a hard time or who needs a little bit more guidance or who just wants someone to speak to. And I'm speaking to them specifically. I'm just speaking one on one. That's why I'm able to do these videos. So if you guys are having a hard time being public or you know speaking up in public, just think of it as doing one to one. I always think of it as I'm speaking one-on-one, -on -one, right? Even when I'm in a group of people, I'll speak to one person. It makes it so much easier because then I'm not thinking, oh my God, there's six people looking at me or 6,000 people looking at me. Oh my God, what am I doing? Is my hair all right? Do I look stupid? Do I sound stupid? Nothing to worry about there. I'm just speaking to one person. It makes life easier. It makes my time a little bit easier. It makes me more comfortable doing this kind of stuff. The only thing I would say I want to add is that this world that we live in, um, I love this world that we live in, but it's a world for talkers, um, not doers necessarily. And it's funny because they've done studies on this where they've seen that you know people who talk a lot, especially in the corporate world, they're the ones who get the promotions. They're the ones who get a higher salary. They're the ones who are considered to be smarter in a crowd of people rather than the people who are quiet but who probably know more than other people. Do you know what I'm saying? That is the reason why I think it's important for us INFJs to learn how to speak up, to embellish ourselves a little bit. Nothing we say is going to be false anyways because we have a hard time lying. And so when we're talking about ourselves, we should be able to say, you know, I did something amazing today. Let me talk about it. You know, every single time I've done something really, really great, I've had such a hard time even saying it out loud to my family about it because I feel like, oh my God, am I, am I bragging? Does anyone care? Blah, 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 right? But that's not the point. The point is, first of all, you're sharing with people that you love. Second of all, if you're in a corporate world, you need to do this stuff, guys, because you're not going to be promoting, you're not going to get the accolades that you deserve. 
because you're doing good work and you need to share it with the world. Those people are not going to know, guys. You're not, they're not going to know. They're not going to know. I am sorry to say this. So please try to reduce that ratio from 100 to 1 to 50-50. Try to speak up a little bit more, especially about yourself. I know it's going to come across as fake or weird or, you know, uncomfortable. But especially if you're in the corporate corporate world, you need to do it. You need to do it, otherwise you're not going to get a promotion. You're not going to get ahead in that field that you want to get ahead in. Now, if you don't care about that stuff, then awesome. You know, it doesn't matter. If you do, then that's one of the main things you really do need to do. You do. It's just the way it is. Okay? All right. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, you know, subscribe. If you didn't like it, let me know what you didn't like. I'm always looking for feedback. And also, if you have a suggestion for a video, something that you want me to talk about, something you want me to spiel on, then let me know as well. And I'll see you guys next time around. Bye for now.